Hi, welcome back to Resin Chem Tech. Today I want to briefly discuss building an LED matrix using WS2812B pixel strips and ESP8266 controller. Now I built this matrix uh, about a year and a half ago, and this matrix basically uh, used the excellent WLED software. Uh, if you've done anything with uh, LED strips, you've probably run across uh, WLED. Um, it has literally hundreds of different patterns, uh, colors, things that you can do. Um, but the one thing that it, that it couldn't do is it can't uh, do text, at least not yet, text or, or numbers. or. But it has some really, really cool patterns that it can do. What I found is while it's really neat and wasn't that difficult to build, most of the time it didn't get used. Uh, occasionally during, you know, a party or a pregame for football, something like that, it might get turned on, but it basically set, uh, turned off most of the time. So after I had built a seven segment LED clock with uh, 3D printed parts, I started asking myself, could I adopt that code to get more use out of the matrix? And here's what I ended up with. So basically, um, it serves as a, a full-fledged clock temperature. It also has different modes. You'll see me push buttons up here. I'll talk a, a little bit more about how it's controlled via home assistant, but it also has local button controls. So it has a countdown timer, scoreboard mode, uh, and basically can display text and, and actually has some text effects. So when we look at this, um, again, it's primarily controlled uh, via MQTT, which means it could be integrated into home assistant, node red, uh, a number of different uh, ways to control it. But again, it, it has all kind of different options for time display. Temperature can be internal or external temperature. Uh, all the colors are customizable. Um, again, has a countdown mode. Uh, we'll count down the time. We won't let that run all the way down. I'll stop and, and reset that. Um, but it does have a, a buzzer for countdown, optional buzzer. Again, scoreboard mode with the ability to customize the team names. Let's say here we've got Dallas uh, versus, say, Miami. Um, so those can be customized as well. And again, the ability to display text and various text effects, um, such as alternating text, uh, appear one letter at a time. Um, so there are, there are about seven or eight different effects that are currently built in, into this right now. And again, um, all controllable through through Home Assistant or through automation, which means it, it is now available to use in automation. So I could actually have some text displayed up here or have the clock do something based on uh, some other event in the house. So to briefly talk about the, the build here, it's relatively, relatively simple. It's, it's the frame is one by four pine. And you see here it's, it's uh, a groove routed for the acrylic or plexiglass front and uh, another groove for the plywood back that the LEDs will mount to. Um, basically, I uh, applied a little bit of frosted glass spray paint to the acrylic sheet. It gives it just a little bit of softness because the LEDs can be, can be really intense. Although you have to be a little careful not to get too much frosted glass because then it actually makes things look blurry. Um, but basically, yeah, it just goes into the groove and, and the four sides are connected together. This was really the only tricky part is it takes quite a bit of time to make sure your pixels are laid out with just the right spacing and that they are horizontally and vertically aligned. Otherwise, your numbers and, and your text are going to look crooked. Uh, you'll notice here I actually laid down double-sided tape uh, onto here. The reason for that is I found that the adhesive that's on the, the WS2812 uh, strips just doesn't hold up over time, especially with the heating. And this is once you put this together, you're not going to be able to, to get to these strips um, without taking the case apart. Um, again, very important to try to get your spacing uh, in alignment very precise on these. Um, so here it is with the backer board and the acrylic sheet installed. You'll notice that there's a gap uh, on the left and right hand side that allows the wires to wrap around. That won't be visible because eventually we're going to come back with two inch trim and trim around that box. 
this is basically the back side with the controllers. Uh, down here, this white box is basically the clock controller module, uh, this uh, real-time clock, and the WS, or I'm sorry, the WLED controller. Uh, basically, a simple toggle switch uh, allows me to switch which controller is feeding its signal to the to the strip. So by building the clock, I did not lose all the functionality of WLED as well. So it really has dual controller and, and can run either one with a uh, simple toggle switch. So, and here's the toggle switch I mentioned and, and three button control for basically changing modes, controlling the countdown timer and uh, being able to increase and reset the scores on the scoreboard. So uh, I actually just finished building a second one. Uh, we liked the first one so much, we actually built a second one to hang out in the garage. And my whole family, I built a mini version as well, plus the original 3D clock. So I think I'm, I think I'm done with uh, uh, creating LED clocks for a while. But if you're interested in more details on the actual build, um, I'll post a link down below to uh, my tech blog that will include the parts list and all the details of, of how the matrix is built. In addition, all of the code and STL files for 3D printed parts can all be found in my GitHub. So hope you enjoyed this. It was a real quick overview. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you like, um, click the subscribe button down here. And if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, click the little bell icon. As always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon.